Hey guys, I'm Jess the MD. Thank you so much for joining me. We are watching another episode of Scrubs today. Before we get into it, I just want to let you guys know I had surgery like a week ago. I'm still recovering, so I might not be quite as high energy as usual, but we are going to do our best. We are watching Scrubs season seven, episode 11, My Princess. Let's jump right in. Hey. Why was your baby boy dressed like Caesar this morning? Oh, I don't have clothes for Sam at my house, so I just cut arm and leg holes in a pillowcase. The gold belt was just so he wouldn't feel ridiculous. JD, you're a parent now. You gotta be better prepared. Yep, that's why we just stocked up on extra baby oil lotion and diapers. Mm -hmm. Why? Is there a party this weekend? It has been a very long time since I watched the latter half of Scrubs. Are they announcing another pregnancy? Anyway, much like one hit wonder Natalie Imbruglia, I'm torn. You see, on one hand, I'm tempted to side with the Gandhis. You do need to buy Sam some clothes. On the other hand, ever since you two made a baby, you've become an even more annoying two-headed know-it-all. <laughs> bing, bing! You hear that, Perry? That's the sound of your hate bouncing off our love. It is so true, this whole preparedness thing. Oh my gosh. I feel like I'm chronically underprepared with my kids. Actually, now that they're five and a half and three and a half, I finally feel like I have a grip on things, but oh my gosh, the number of times I forgot to pack extra diapers or wipes or literally anything the kids would need. It's finally at a point where I feel like we always have everything we need with us for the most part, but when they were little, oh my gosh, it was a never ending struggle to make sure that you had every single thing that you would need with you. Many of you have been disregarding the hospital's 12 hour shift policy. Now, I don't care if you think your patients need you. When your shift is over, I want you to go home to your sad, empty lives. Tired doctors make mistakes and the hospital is liable. Believe me, you do not want to find yourself in a court of law. Tell them what happens there, Ted. Well, we'll all wear long black robes <laughs> and beautiful white curly wigs. That's England, Ted. Are you sure? Anyway, from now on, anyone caught working after their shift is over will be sent home immediately and docked a full day's pay. Ciao. While that may sound harsh, I totally understand it. It's really important to make sure that you are well rested enough to make good decisions for your patients. While Kelso is probably making these decisions from a monetary and a liability standpoint, let's just think about our patients. If we are exhausted, if we are overworked, overrun, we're not making the best decisions for our patients and we are not doing them an actual positive service. We could potentially be harming them, which is not something we wanna do. So Kelso is coming at this probably a little bit harshly with docking a full day's pay, but I think the point stands that he's just trying to make sure that patient care is where it should be, even though it sounds like he's thinking more about the money. What is it? I make it quick so you don't bore me. A few months ago, Elliot and I almost kissed, but now she's saying, well, oh, you tried your best, now leave me alone. Slaggy, you're up. A genetic defect that presents with anemia and causes copper buildup in the liver and other organs, destroying them. What is? Wilson's disease. It is Wilson's disease. It also can cause things like jaundice, so yellowing of the skin. It can cause these copper looking flecks in the irises around the perimeters usually, and also tremors or muscle stiffness, muscle issues. Wilson's disease? Yes. Oh yes, in your face, in your face. What annoying what? thing is happening now? Yeah. They're playing Diagnosis Jeopardy. When you win, you get to gloat. It's so stupid. You never got to gloat, did you? I don't believe in gloating. It's tacky. JD loves to gloat. Let's be real here. JD absolutely loves to gloat. A condition in which the patient speaks in previously unknown dialect due to severe brain trauma. What is foreign oh, accent syndrome? Something. Yes, in your faces! Or should I say, in your faces? Hello, governor. Throw another shrimp on a baby for me. Wait, that's Irish. You're an idiot. Was that gloating? That was a little gloaty, right? I'm pretty sure that was a little bit gloaty. Now, I have to go start work because in spite of all of you, I'm going to have a great day. That was the worst day I've ever had. Daddy's home. Come here, go check your boy. Give me a big kiss. I love you, puppy. Good night. Where the hell are you going? It's your night to tell him a story. Oh, no, no, no. I couldn't be more wiped out. 
The nanny's mom died, and I had to spend the whole day sprinting around the house trying to avoid having conversations with her. You don't see me crying about it, so suck it up and spin a yarn. Yeah, Dad, suck it up. I love Jordan. You have to love her, right? Because the nanny's mom died, and the nanny still came to work. I mean, honestly, would you expect anything different from Jordan, though? Because... Jordan. There was once a nurse, a surgeon, a doctor, and an idiot. Does this hat make me look fly? Perry, he's four. No hospital stories. Fine. There was once a two-headed witch, a princess, and a village idiot. Does this hat make me look flyeth? It jingles when I shake it. I am very excited to see how Cox spins a hospital story into a fairy tale. This is gonna be fun. My poor maiden is being tormented by a terrible monster. She grows weaker by the minute. A monster? I mean, she looks ill, but I think it's a bit of a leap to say it's the work of a monster. There's a monster in there. It is so awful when you have patients that come in and you have absolutely no idea what's going on with them. I think we actually talked about this in another video. And in that video, JD did nothing and the patient got better, which great. Although the patient came in with a fever and then it turned into a drug fever. So it was a little bit different. But in this situation, they have no idea what's going on. And it is just awful to watch someone deteriorate doing everything you can possibly think to be doing, but you don't have any clues as to what's going on. That rarely ever happens, but it definitely does happen every so often. She's febrile, her liver's enlarged, and her kidneys are shutting down. Are you gonna help me or not? She's febrile, her liver is shutting down, and her kidneys are failing. Is this hepatorenal syndrome? Usually that's something that will happen if someone has advanced cirrhosis or this long-term chronic damage to the liver, but is that possibly what's happening here? I obviously don't know this patient's background or what's going on, so I guess let's keep watching to find out. No, speaker! A warning to all! Any who dare set foot in my forbidden forest shall fall and disappear! I was in the Forbidden Forest earlier today, and I'm still here. <laughs> Where'd he go? Where'd he go? What? Where... <laughs> Murphy's shift ended 20 minutes ago, and he was still here. So now he's going home without pay. If anyone would like to join him, test me. I should at least take that body downstairs. I said out! Kelso over here enforcing his rules. Oh my gosh. Were you guys able to get that C. diff test I ordered? Lab's all backed up. We need those results now. I'll handle this. I'll stay here. God help me, I wish you could. Can help me as if you could. We need a monster fighting potion. Sorry. This customer here is next. The C. diff testing is actually really fast. Usually it's a toxin test and it comes back really quickly if, of course, the lab isn't backed up. But I wouldn't necessarily expect this patient's liver and kidneys to be failing unless she's been having just profuse diarrhea for a really long time, is completely dehydrated, and is having acute organ failure. I don't know. We need so much more information. Guess who got the lab results? Oh, you guys are amazing. Damn, C. diff is negative. She's getting worse and we're not any closer to figuring out why. I gotta page him. Sometimes when a patient's condition is changing, it actually can help us figure out what's going on because we have more symptoms to work with. So while it's really bad that this patient is getting worse, it may be giving them more clues to figure out what's going on. And now we wait. Hey, can you get rid of this tail? No problem, buddy. I meant with magic! He's here. And then, before them, appeared the bravest, most handsome knight that any of them had ever seen. It's gotta be Cox. It's always gonna be Cox. Well, it is Cox's story, but it's... This is always how Cox is portrayed, right? My poor maiden is being held captive by a monster that can't be beaten. There is no such thing as a monster that can't be beaten. Hey, you. Hang on to that. You know, I miss hanging out with you. 
like, alone. There's not much I can do. Last night I had some grog with a guy whose hut mate is a barrel maker. Let's just say the guy has a saw. Be careful or I'll make your chin disappear. Oh, too late. That's not nice. Look, the battle has begun. My name is Percival Cox. You're killing my friend. Prepare to die. You know, when I was younger watching this, I never picked up the Princess Bride reference. The only way to save your fair maiden is to go to the Forbidden Forest and find the Golden Ring. The Golden Ring? Why? Because finding the diagnosis is the only way to help her. Right now, you're just treating symptoms that are leading you down the wrong road. You need to go back to the beginning. Back to every textbook, every case study you ever read. And most importantly, to find the Golden Ring, you must remember what you heard when you weren't even listening. Remember what you heard when you weren't even listening? What the hell does that mean? I don't know, but I can't find anything in here to explain her kidney malfunction, her lack of clotting, and the internal bleeding. Kidney malfunction, lack of clotting. Well, lack of clotting has to do with the liver failure. The internal bleeding probably has to do with the lack of clotting, but clearly they're missing something. Obviously they're missing something. I feel like we're just getting lost deeper in the woods. <laughs> ass is bleeding. Sasha, are you okay? No, idiot, your ass is bleeding. I know, my tail was ripped off. If it doesn't scab over, my soul will leak out. Why are you looking at my ass anyway, princess? Missing what you could have had when you tried to kiss me earlier? Good morrow! Maybe because he's bleeding on her dress, I would not want blood on my pretty princess dress, so that's probably why she's looking at his ass. Idiot! Princess, you shouldn't be in the Forbidden Forest. The Dark Lord is near. Hide! Come on, Sasha. Evening. Are JD and Elliot way past their shift? Your time has come. You're both suspended. You can't do that. This is my hospital. I can do whatever I want. Get it? Sir, you can't suspend me. I'm private practice. And I've had zero patient interaction, so there's no liability issue. So this can't come back to me? No. no. Then get out. Excellent point. JD and Elliot are just working on figuring out what's going on. We all take the job home with us at times. And when you're worried about a patient, you're going to go home and you're going to sit and you're going to stew about it and try and figure out what's going on. And you're going to keep thinking about it, hopefully until you figure out what's going on. JD and Elliot really didn't do anything wrong. And honestly, Elliot being private practice really doesn't make any difference at all. We have to save my maiden. How are we supposed to find a golden ring in an endless forest? Remember what you heard when you weren't even listening. Listening, listening, listening. Am I imagining him? Imagining who? Asked and answered. Hey, idiot! Down here! What's up, bro? Wood nymphs! I just remembered something. I was barely listening. A genetic defect that presents with anemia and causes copper buildup in the liver and other organs, destroying them. What is Wilson's disease? It's Wilson's disease. Is it though? Why is she febrile? My only thought is it does have an effect on the brain. Is there like a hypothalamic issue where it's messing with her thermoregulation? Wilson's disease can cause a lot of issues and yeah, it can definitely cause kidney failure too. Little bag of copper. The golden ring. Oh, the ring. We must make haste back to the maiden. To Sasha! We're doomed. What does treatment of Wilson's disease actually look like though? Usually it's copper chelating agents. So we're trying to get all those excess copper deposits out of the body. Then we're treating with medications that prevent absorption of copper or keeping copper out of the body, making sure that you're not eating things that have extra copper in it, etc. So we're trying to make sure that we don't get extra copper buildup again that causes decompensation like this. How do we know for sure it's Wilson's disease? She'll have copper deposits around her iris. What does it look like? 
a little really cool golden ring. That's a great diagnosis. What are her chances? Well, we've done all we can. Now she needs a new liver. We just gotta hope she gets one at time. Oh wow. So she went into full on liver failure, like not coming back, totally cirrhotic needs a new liver that has been going on for a while this is not a new thing that's happening for her this is a long-standing issue elliot asking about what the copper deposits look like in the eye yes definitely something that you want to see because it looks really cool but in medical school we all learn about this and we all see pictures of it what about the maiden what do you think jack she lived happily ever after Go to sleep. I love you very much. So? So what? So, did the girl make it? Did she get her liver in time? Is that how it really ended? Let's just say... That's the way I'm telling it. Is that why he came home saying that he had just the worst day because it didn't work out that way? Ugh. It's awful when you come so close, you are right there, right about to figure it out and help someone and things just go sideways and there's nothing you can really do about it. It is heartbreaking. It just breaks down your spirit. Oh my gosh. Okay, well that <laughs> was kind of a, sad way to end it, but hopefully she got her liver and everything was okay. Y'all, thank you so much for joining me watching this episode. I totally forgot this episode. It, it literally, I'm pretty sure I only watched it the one time, which is pretty shocking for me. If you guys like this episode, leave a like, comment down below, subscribe to the channel. It really helps the girl out. Thank you so much for joining me. I'm just the MD. I really enjoyed spending time with you. I hope you enjoyed spending time with me and I will see you in the very next one. Bye.